Hey everybody, today is the second video that I'm doing that is going to be a much shorter video, less in-depth video than what I typically do on my sword reviews. Uh, totally unscripted, just uh, wanted to get some data points out for current and future sword collectors and as well as share my opinion on some swords that I'm going to go a little bit less into detail on. Now, uh, I have talked previously about the scimitar. And by that I mean the historical scimitar, what the uh, what we call a scimitar, what it actually is, and what it is not. And my thought of what a scimitar was, whenever I went to go look to see what I could get uh, reproduction-wise that would replicate a historical scimitar, uh, was something a lot closer to this, which is this condor what they call Sinbad Scimitar. Now, whenever I was a kid, I used to run around with a little plastic sword that looked a whole lot like this, which I'll flash a picture up on. And uh, whenever I started doing research on historical scimitars, really this is the sword that I was expecting uh, to come across. But it turns out that this sword is purely a fantasy design. It seems to be a 20th century invention from what I could find. Couldn't really find uh, any specifics on where this came from. It's most commonly called, and particularly in this exact model, uh, called a Sinbad Scimitar. I think that there is a movie or two in which a sword like this appears, uh, and uh, there's also a uh, uh, some written work from Sinbad called the Golden Scimitar of Sinbad uh, that also features a, a, a sword not terribly unlike this um, on its cover. So, uh, I went ahead and bought both a Shamshir and a Talwar made by Cold Steel, and uh, that really satisfied the historical scimitar need. But I still kind of wanted one of these swords that I ran around with uh, whenever I was a kid, at least a real steel version of one of those swords. And I went ahead and decided on this Condor, which has a an, an advertised or an MSRP price of $175. I think I paid somewhere close to $150, maybe $125 whenever I bought mine. So not a huge price investment. The nice thing is, though, that it's made of 1075 high carbon steel. So still made of carbon steel. Condor is based in El Salvador. And from what I understand, it looks like they mainly do uh, working blades, so machetes and so on. So this, to that end, feels like almost feels like in the hand uh, more of a machete than a sword and uh, some may even call it a sword shaped machete but really what's the difference um, at that point what we have here is an overall length of 31.9 inches so we'll just call it 32 inches with a blade length of 22 inches and an advertised weight of 43 ounces, which is 2.7 pounds. So uh, it actually feels, though, really nice in the hand. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it has a, a hefty feel, considering, again, that it's got this really deep belly. And it has a, 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 an almost hand and a half grip that you can definitely get two hands on, or at least I can just barely get two hands on. Like I said, it feels more like a, a hand and a half than a true two handed. Uh, but I'm able to use it quite uh, ably with one hand as well, and that's primarily how I've uh, I've used this sword before. So, uh, what I really like about it is it is just a supremely good cutter. Uh, it cuts so easily, it's insane. Um, with the edge, I'm mainly using the factory edge. I touched it up just a touch with a very fine belt on the work sharp. Uh, just to kind of bring, you know, any factory burr off of it. Uh, but it cuts unbelievably easily. Uh, it's just even going through the tatami, I can cut really, really thin slices off of tatami in, in really precise ways. It's just crazy how good it cuts. Now, it also has a false edge on the back here. I've left that unsharpened. I'm not probably ever going to do anything with it unless I just get super bored and want to sharpen things and wife doesn't want me to sharpen the butter knives again. Uh, one thing that I'm not super crazy about on it, but probably is objectively better from a durability standpoint, and again, this may stem from the machete uh, thinking, is what they call this blasted satin finish. It's kind of a grayish white. Uh, I don't find it to be particularly attractive. I'd rather that be, you know, uh, just a satin 
or polished uh, steel, but they're probably it's probably quicker and easier and cheaper to do that, particularly from a labor standpoint than it is to get any kind of uh, glossy sheen on there. And again, if you're thinking about it from the standpoint of a machete, it's probably better to have some kind of rust pr prohibitive coating on there. Uh, it has this kind of kind of basic disc guard again coated in the same way. Some of the the coating has kind of gotten nicked off while it's ridden around, or not really ridden around, but just hung out in the, the little sword racks over there. So it is a uh, full tang here. You can see the slab riveted with uh, brass pins. And I have noticed as I've been using this sword that I've felt a little bit of movement in that grip panel. Not much, just barely imperceptible, and I really only noticed it whenever uh, I was out cutting with it. I did go ahead and cut some uh, some small tree limbs back, some green tree limbs, and even some dead ones back with it, and uh, didn't have any kind of issue with deflection or, or edge rolling or anything like that. No chipping for sure. So I assume this could be used as a machete if you wanted to use it as a machete, uh, because again, that kind of has that, um, that pedigree uh, from that company. So it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun to use. It's a lot of fun to swing around. Uh, it's a lot of fun to cut with. Uh, because again it just cuts so easily this would be a great uh, entry-level sword if you don't have one yet and you wanted to practice sword cutting of course um, it's going to be extremely forgiving on edge alignment which is both a good and a bad thing because uh, you may not unlearn some bad habits because um, this sword is going to really help you it's practically a lightsaber so uh, i like it overall i think it's really well made especially for as cheap as they once were i don't know what the current market is on them. I bought this about a year ago. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, it's one of my four favorite swords uh, to cut with, even though it's uh, cheap and relatively workmanlike. So uh, definitely not a bad thing at all. But yeah, if you're interested in this sword, again, it's called a Sinbad Scimitar Sword, uh, made by Condor Knife and Tool out of El Sal Salvador. It also comes with a pretty nice leather fitted sheath which is uh, not a scabbard, but it would be pretty difficult to make a scabbard for this really bizarre blade shape. I think that these historically, they say that the closest thing it matches would be something like a falchion, uh, but not quite, but certainly not either way, not uh, what has historically been called a scimitar, but it's got some buttons on here that I'm having a hard time getting to navigating around this microphone. But again, comes with, uh, even for the money, comes with uh, a nice little fitted sheath to help protect the blade. And I uh, hope you liked the video, and I will see you again soon.